Hello and welcome to Overtime. I'm Nicole Dubay, joined by Ted Wyman, sports editor for the Winnipeg Sun. We're going to talk Jets because uh, quite a lot happened in a week's time, if not less than that. The Jets started coming into this past week in a playoff spot uh, and a, a really devastating loss to Edmonton. Take it away, Ted. Well, the loss to Edmonton was particularly bad because that is the second, the team with the second worst record in the entire National Hockey League. Coming into the MTS Center where the Jets have been so good, yep. and they just fell flat. The Jets did not play well. The Oilers are a young team, a skilled team, and that came through in the third period, and they beat the Jets who looked tired. It, it just didn't make a lot of sense because they are the team that's in a battle for a playoff right. spot, and they should be out there and, and making things happen in those kind of games. They've lost three games to Montreal this year. They've lost to Edmonton. They've lost to Columbus. Those things are going to come back and really be noticeable if they miss the playoffs by a couple of points. So, very tough loss, but not the end of the world. There's a lot of ways to get back into this Absolutely. thing. And the first one is going to be Thursday night when the Florida Panthers come to town for a big Southeast Division matchup. Uh, a little bit of, uh, I guess, a shining light uh, right now with the Jets is, is Wheeler. He's been playing amazing. Blake Wheeler has really developed into an excellent hockey player. I think he always was. He was a high draft yeah. pick. He was a good college player, great high school player in the States, but definitely flew under the radar on the third he line did. in Boston for a couple of seasons. And, uh, you know, the trade to Atlanta and then moving with the Thrashers to Winnipeg has worked out so beautifully for him. He loves it in Winnipeg. And he loves the way Claude Noel has taken the reins off and, and let him go. And man, has he ever come through for the Jets. I don't think anybody expected they were getting a leading scorer when they signed him to a contract this year. Uh, they've done very well uh, with Blake Wheeler, who actually has more points than Alex Ovechkin. Uh, speaking so of, you got to uh, like that. Yes, yes. And speaking of, of good moves, not to uh, cut you off there, but uh, trade deadline, deadline was on Monday. And the Jets actually, I think... You were telling me that you're pretty happy with what they did. I think they did a really good job, Kevin Sheveldayoff. Now, he didn't do a lot to add to the Winnipeg Jets right now. He didn't do something that's going to put them over the top in the playoffs. But he did something really good for the future of the Winnipeg Jets, and that was move of pending, unrestricted free agent, Johnny Oduya. Good defenseman, but expendable. Absolutely. And they moved him to the Chicago Blackhawks. He got a second round pick in 2013. He got a third round pick in 2013. And then he went and claimed Grant Klitsam off of uh, waivers, a, a, another defenseman uh, from the Columbus Blue Jackets, and brought him in to basically replace Johnny Oduya. And Klitsam is younger, and he's cheaper, and mm -hmm. he's under contract for next year. And he actually has more goals and points and a better plus minus than Johnny Oduya did. So you just can't, you look at that, we haven't seen him play yet. But I think that looks like a really good move on paper, and I think the Jets are going to benefit in the future from that move. Right, and at this point where they are with this franchise, it's not about tomorrow. It's, it's not about immediately tomorrow, but the future. It's about both building. things, really. And I think that what they wanted to do was try to stay competitive in the playoff race and, and not mortgage their future in any way. And that mission was accomplished. Good. All right. Well, that's all the time. Thanks, Ted. I'm Nicole Dubé. We'll see you next time on Overtime.